Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today for round number three of the season for the Chinese Grand Prix part four in total. If you guys missed the first three parts, first three episodes and check them out by clicking on the card in the top right hand corner of your screen for the latest episode along with the full playlist link. It will also be linked down below in the description guys if you want to go check that out before we jump into any further spoilers. Now for this race you can see on screen we have no rain expected this weekend here at the Chinese Grand Prix. We have plenty Plenty of uh, cloud and overcast conditions, but crucially, no rain. Also, in terms of R&D, we do have one failed upgrade on the aerodynamic on the drag part of the car. We do luckily, though, get two upgrades on the car for the chassis and the engine. The first two actual performance upgrades on the car, because so far, all we've done is our uh, reliability upgrade. So finally, we've got some actual performance on the car for this race. And currently, we are still at 110% AI in these races so far. You know, every, every episode so far has been 110%. So hopefully, we can keep it that way, because the AI are a lot tougher in this year's game and they're a lot harder to beat now you can see right now in the R&D tree here we're currently first and ahead of Mercedes but they have also brought some upgrades of their own and a few other teams as well and overall the development race is already underway and everyone's trying to fight to maximize those positions now in terms of practice uh, after the last race where we kind of missed most of the sessions because I made a mistake and skipped the qualifying this time we are going to do a better practice session and um, the pace was tricky around here I can't lie 110 was a big challenge and uh, the qualifying performance test was not going according to the plan we didn't really have the pace and um, it was quite a challenge however we did score maximum points in the race strategy and track acclimatization with that we jump into qualifying on Saturday overcast conditions here at the Shanghai International Circuit and uh, hopefully we could try and have a good qualifying session here and try and do good because last time in Bahrain we qualified P14 we did do a lap and we did have the pace for Q3 but we actually got an invalidation when it mattered the most which was a shame so um, yeah we're so far we're going to try and see if we can jump to Q3 we got Q3 in Australia as well so let's try and go back to that Australia first race of the season form and see if we can try and bounce back so here we go then into qualifying and we're going to see how we go you as usual we're going to do the three parts of qualifying q1 q2 and q3 and uh, we're going to try and see if we can try and also maybe start the race in the mediums possibly we'll have to see how that one goes but uh, first of all let's see what the pace is in q1 and we'll take it from there so here we go onto the circuit then at shanghai and we're going to try and get a business done nice and early in this session and uh, make sure that we are done and dusted so we hit up the track with a brand new set of soft tires and you can see here currently midway through my lap in Q1, we're 1.1 down already through Sector 2 on Devon Butler there as we now go in towards the hairpin towards the end of the lap. Just trying to make sure we keep it nice and tidy here and end the lap nicely and see where we go as we now go in towards the final corner down a couple of gears. Attack the inside curve, let the car run wide and then open up the RS and across the line. Let's see what the lap is and it's going to be P11 for us so that's not too bad. And uh, overall that should see us through into Q2 I think that was enough. Uh, pace to be comfortable and uh, in the end it was actually good enough nobody else actually beat us so overall a pretty okay session uh, Lewis and uh, and Seb there on medium tyres trying to get through but we was quite aware of the pace there 1.4 is a lot to make up and in Q2 I went up on the mediums on my first one to see if I could try and have a go at these tyres and see if I could make it through somehow and I quickly realised after the first two sectors that it wasn't going to happen and now through the final corner here into, into the end of the, of, of the lap and there we go last P15 way off the pace over two seconds off and I quickly realized, okay, it seems like 110 AI might be a little bit tricky for us around here. Unfortunately, once you get to qualifying, you can't change the difficulty. So we're kind of stuck with this now for the rest of the weekend. And we're going to have to try and put up with it. And currently here, we're on our lap in Q2 on soft tires, pushing to the limit to see if we can try and sneak into Q3 at the minute. Again, 1.1 down through sector two and we're still last place here so it's all going to come down to the final sector as we go down towards the hairpin and I missed my apex a little bit there at the hairpin and get onto that curb a little bit scruffy there a little bit of understeer kicking in as we now go towards the final corner down a couple of gears again attack the inside curb they let the car run wide and open up the RS up to the line do we do enough and I think we do just sneak into Q3 there and up under pressure we do deliver with a big lap there for P9 in that session so overall under pressure, struggling for pace, but we pull it out of the bag, and uh, yeah, 1.3 off the pace, which is quite a way off still, and uh, that's not just off anybody, that's 1.3 off my teammate, who went through P1, but crucially, we do get through into Q3, however, we are going to start the race on the soft tyres, which is not ideal, one little bit, so um, yeah, we're going to be on the back foot in the race in terms of strategy, but now, into Q3, I went for two runs on soft tyres in this session, and uh, my first run was okay, um, pretty decent banker to be fair, and I was quite happy with the lap. We go P8 there, and uh, not a great lap, you know, still one over a second off Sebastian Vettel. And um, that was one of my personal better laps, but generally speaking, it wasn't a great lap compared to the AI. 
and um, that's just down to the fact it's 110 AI. It was a little bit too hard for me around here. They've definitely improved the AI here because last year this was a good track, you know, for us to race at. This year it's a huge challenge, and dare I say, harder than Bahrain. But nonetheless, now on board for our best lap in Q3, then let's stick with it and let's see how we get on. Straight away, one, two, and now down towards turn three. Trying to keep it nice and tidy and uh, nice and tight to the apex and get the power as soon as possible on the exit there as we now go down towards turn four on the kink and then down towards turn five, braking just bang on the 100 meter ball, down to second gear, be patient on the braking and then even more patient picking up the traction. I get a little bit too excited there and lose the back end a little bit as we now go in towards turn six and turn seven. All about car set up here in momentum and uh, we had to actually do a couple of downshifts here. The, the front end wasn't really working for me around this track and I had a lot of understeer around here as we now go into the double lefts of eight and nine. All about letting the car just flow through here and then easy on the traction as we now go towards the end of sector two and in towards the very tricky off cambered left hand hairpin here which feeds into the long right banker and uh, it's all about again patience here picking up the throttle don't get the throttle too early because you will spin the car and then now go flat out really pick up the power as we go to the back straight two and a half tenths up here pretty much so far on this lap as we now open up the drs on the back straight and this is all about just set up work and straight line speed of your car as we now go down towards the hairpin here looking for the 100 meter board as the reference point and down to second gear for your apex we just about get it slowed down and get it absolutely perfectly there a little bit of a poor exit though on traction not the best as we now go in towards the final corner down a couple of gears but on Unfortunately, I take too much inside curb and cut the corner and that's going to be an invalidation for us which is a shame because I backed that towards the end there but I reckon we could have improved by around three tenths and that would have meant we could have started in P7 this race. Instead, we're going to start from P10 on those used softs from Q2. So overall, the positive is that we got Q3 for the first time since Australia and we bounced back after a poor Bahrain session. However, the downside is that we're going to be in the worst position on the grid considering we're starting on soft tyres. So uh, overall, we've got it all to do in the race tomorrow and the AI do seem legitimately very quick around here. So the pressure's on, but let's see if we can try and deliver. It's time for the race here at China and hopefully we can try and uh, score some big points in the race tomorrow. It's time for round three for the Chinese Grand Prix here at Shanghai. It's the start of the season. How do you think things are going to go for you? Your qualifying pace didn't put you at the front of the grid. Will this be a problem tomorrow? Appreciate your time. It's time to find out which driver is up to the task of claiming the Chinese Grand Prix. We're here in Shanghai. We're here in the Yangtze River Delta today, home of the 16 corners that make up the Shanghai International Circuit. 54% of this 3.3 mile lap is taken at full throttle and we'll be getting up to speeds of around 200 miles an hour with DRS assisting the cars down the back straight before they break into the sharp hairpin at turn 14. Joining me once again to take you through this race is the effervescent Anthony Davidson and I'm very much looking forward to it getting underway. You raced here of course, didn't you, back in your Super Aguri days in that infamous Chinese Grand Prix of 2007? Yeah, that's right. I didn't last that long though, unfortunately. Uh, qualifying had gone pretty well, but my brakes failed quite early in the race, around lap 10 or 11, something like that. And of course, back in 2004, I was the very first Formula 1 driver to complete a lap of this circuit. Just thought I'd mention that for you, Crofty, you like a good stat. Uh, it's a fairly tough circuit on the brakes here though, you know, there's that long back straight down into turn 14, and then you've got turn 6 and 11, they're quite heavy as well. On top of that, managing your front tyre wear is always a challenge around here, so there's a lot to keep in mind during the Grand Prix. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Butler, Weber, Max Verstappen and Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Ricardo, Grosjean and Martinez, Perez, Norris, Lance Stroll and Sainz, Fiat, Raikkonen, Alexander Albon and George Russell, Kubica and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track.
Okay, then here we are on the grid for the Chinese Grand Prix, round number three of the season. And we start from P10, probably the worst place on the grid. But unfortunately, that's what I get for messing up my qualifying lap. We could have been starting in P7 today, but uh, instead we're starting P10 on a used set of softs. So everyone behind us is going to have a much, much bigger stra strategic advantage in terms of the tyres. And we're going to be at a pretty bad deficit and a handicap. Now, in terms of the strategy, um, you can see that the soft does not last at all. So we're going to be in for a tricky race, um, a pretty comfortable two stop because obviously um tires do go for quite a long time it's just the fact we have to do a two stop and uh yeah we're going to see how it goes we're going to probably go soft medium hard as it says on screen and uh, fuel wise we are one lap over so with that being said we're just going to try our best and uh, similar to bahrain i think my target for this one is going to be a top six try and be with the big boys basically so um yeah let's see how we get on and hopefully we can try and do a good race and have a little bit of fun with that being said it's now time for round three for the chinese grand prix here at shanghai here we go then the five red lights come on for the Chinese Grand Prix revs into the optimal zone and it's lights out and away we go. Not a good launch at all. I tried a bit of a short shift method and it backfired massively into turn one. We're going to hold the inside line. We're still P10, so we haven't actually lost any positions yet. We've got Ricardo and Grosjean here going side by side. We're going to see if we can try and go around the outside into turn three. Not much grip there though, unfortunately. We're going to pick up the normal racing line though on the exit. A little bit wide there onto the curb, but we're just about going to get away with it. Hopefully, and in theory, a race pace should be better. Um, it has been at Australia and Bahrain in both races, so hopefully it'll be more competitive. So far, though, no way through as we try to get past the blockade of uh, Haas and Renaults here. That's going to get us into the top six. You can see there's two Haas cars, two Renault cars, pretty much. Best of the rest. And uh, that's what's separating us from the big teams. In this case, the Red Bull of, uh, I believe that's Max Verstappen, if I just caught a glimpse of the name. But so far on lap one, no progress made. Hopefully now we'll start making some inroads on the back straight. I haven't actually seen what my straight line speed is like compared to other AI drivers in the race. Um, even practice and qualify, we didn't really race anybody. So I'm not really uh, aware of you know, what we're like for straight line speed. So we'll find out now for the first time. So here we go then. Onto the back straight. Yeah, indeed. And uh, there we go. They're a little bit far back. We're not getting much of a toe from Ricardo. So uh, nothing much is happening. It's a battle for the lead, I think. Or a little bit further up, I think maybe third place. Yeah, it looks like a Mercedes and the Red Bull doing battle there. Vettel still holds first place and he's starting to establish a gap, so that's good to see. Hopefully he can try and pull away. And that one is done and dusted. And uh, no progress made in terms of positions, but we haven't lost anything. Everyone behind us is on medium, so we're the last of the soft runners, so we need to make some progress here before our tyres start to fade. I can't lie, I'm struggling for pace here early on. I really don't have much pace. I can't really keep up with Ricardo here. And uh, Perez is trying to put the pressure on him from behind. Just don't really have much to respond with, unfortunately. And the minute Howard's going to set the pace. A little bit quicker than Sebastian Vettel. I do wonder what tyres they're on. I'm not really sure who's on what at the minute. Window open. Let's box this lap. So the team want us in this lap. And to be honest, I might oblige and try and undercut people in front of me. Depends how many come in. But at the minute, we are struggling here as the remaining midfield runners do battle here for the best of the rest position. Both has cars going side by side through one, two and three. I really just don't have any pace at all. I'm really just on the back foot at the minute. It looks like Perez has got DRS. He's got a run on me. Strolling for straight line speed here. I'm so hot, so hot. I'm going to have to try and pull it back around. Perez on the switch back, but doesn't find a way through. Okay, we're going to pit in. We're going to get off these tyres. Nobody else pits in, so we're going to have a free pit box to ourselves. Here we go. It all slowed down. There we go. Yep, come on it, Jeff. Right, let's try and have a good stop here. Come on, boys. Release, there you go. Release. Good stop. 2.5, pretty decent. Better than the last few races. Also, I got away quite quick for a change. So we're coming at the back. Good thing is we have clean air. So hopefully we can push on this tyre and really try and switch it on. The hard tyre goes on forever right, around here. Stop One stop left in this strategy. Yep, the hard tyre lasts forever. So it's all about using this tyre to really push and uh, extract some good laps. So this outlap has to be good. Uh, we'll struggle at first in sector one just on the colder tyres, but once we get up to speed, it has to be a good lap. So we're going to consume a good part of a fuel in the RS here. Looks like no one's pitting yet, so that's good news for us. We'll get we're another lap. Our teammate by 32.9 seconds. We are down on straight line speed, though, I must say. I think we put a little bit too much air on, so I might take a little bit off in the next stop. A little bit front wing off, but at the minute, I wonder if they are going to try and one stop on the softs. Surely not. That's impossible. Okay, now we finally have cars in the pit lane, I believe. 
Let's see if we pull off any form of an undercut. We've had plenty of time. There's Ricardo in the pit lane. The car ahead is 16.8 seconds. And there we go. We're out in front of Ricardo. And that's Lucas Weber there in the red ball. So the undercut works out. Let's see if we undercut the rest of the midfield runners. We're doing one more lap on those softs. But at the minute, that was a good strategy call. It's got us into the race. And now we've got to try and obviously nurse this extra two laps of wear on these tyres for the rest of the race. But the minute it's looking good. Let's try and keep the pace going. Sebastian's in for his stop. Okay, so now the lead runners are pitting, and pretty much everybody else that's on softs will be coming in this lap. So this is interesting. Now let's see how we uh, let's see where we feed out, or where the AR feed out more like, and let's see where we are in this race. Another good lap from us, though, for a personal best. My pace still, still doesn't feel great. I think I need a little bit of a front wing adjustment just to take a bit of front wing off. I feel like I'm not even moving on the straights. Here we go down to the pit straight though. We advise moving to mix two, fuel to mix two. We've passed the Haas. Hulkenberg stays in front, but he is on cold tyres. We're going to try and get underneath. And there we go, we just sneak past Hulkenberg and make the move. So we're, bar we're past both Renaults, and there's another Haas still staying out on those soft tyres. Surely those tyres can't go much longer. And look at that train of cars in front including two Red Bulls right at the back of it. Let's try and close up if we can. This is going to get us right in the race at the minute. A little bit low on the ERS here, and uh, Hulkenberg will have DRS on me. I'm going to use Overtake just briefly, down to 20%. I'm going to try and see if it gives me enough, but Hulkenberg is still close here. And he does go down the inside. He sends one. We're going to be on the outside here, in towards the hairpin. We are going to find the drive on the outside, though, to make the move and stay ahead. Let's try and get past Carlos Sainz if we can here. In the McLaren at the final corner. We open up DRS, rich mix enabled. Let's try and power past him if we can. There's the other Haas in the pit lane. So there we go. We've jumped all of the guys that we needed to overtake. So we're now net P6, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we're behind all the big boys. And we've got both of the Rebels here trying to get past that traffic as well. So just like in Bahrain and Australia, we're right back in this race. Also, this traffic is a great opportunity for me to save ERS. I've been running on none the entire lap so far. And uh, we're charging up the battery really nicely here, so hopefully we'll be able to deploy it on the straight. Lucas Weber here struggling to get past Antonio Giovinazzi as Holkenberg has now got past Carlos Sainz. Let's see if we can try and close in on the guys in front here and now make something happen. Weber's going to go to the outside of Giovinazzi into this very awkward left-hander. South by side and Weber gets the job done. Giovinazzi has to yield. We're going to try and slip in underneath here if we can on the Sauber. Power down. It's going to be a drag race. We're definitely not as quick on the straight as uh, we have been in past races. Let's see who gets the toe from the red ball. I'm going to try and get across to get that toe a little bit more. And Holkerberg's coming at us here, but we're going to have to try and go defensive at the same time. Cover the inside. And there we go. That's good car placement there as we stay in front. Let's try and save a little bit more ERS if we can. While we use Weber's DRS on the pitch straight. And uh, hopefully we'll gain some more time. Okay, you're in his dirty air. Get past him. Gap to teammate ahead is 3.8 seconds. Look at this train of cars here. You've got Vettel in there. You've got Mercedes in there, I think, behind the Toro Rosso. And you've also got Kubica here holding up both of the Red Bulls. So at the minute, this race, this game through the traffic is really suiting our race because we're struggling for pace here. And this has given me the chance to really fight these guys. I'm saving fuel on the RS as much as I can at the moment and see if I can you know get back on target and have something to push with for the rest of the race especially once we get to the hards we're gonna need a little bit of fuel yeah don't worry Jeff oh that's hot on the brakes there we're gonna have to be careful through the very tricky Mickey Mouse kind of chicane that feeds into the bank we're gonna try and slip through here try and get underneath Lucas Webber at all wheel tap there a little bit of smoke kicked up but here we go this is why we saved the ERS we should have a lot of legs here even though that's straight on speed ain't great this weekend. We've got the toe, and that's going to allow the engine power to really show through. We get past Lucas Weber. Can we get past Verstappen? Down the inside at the hairpin. Yes, we do. A little bit of contact in the process. But we get past three cars. A warning there for a collision with Verstappen, but I didn't really do much. I just kept my line straight, went into the apex. Verstappen couldn't turn in because I was there. But there we go. We've got past both of the Red Bulls now. And now we've got to get past a bit more traffic in the form of Alexander Albon. He's going to be slow on those tyres. So we'll try and size him up for a move somewhere. 
this is good for me as well in terms of my strategy because I pee in earlier on these so my tyres are more worn than everybody else's but it's going to give me a chance to save tyres a bit and uh, hide the wear let's try and get the run on Albon here and try and dispatch him into turn 5 down the inside of the tyre driver a bit of a slippy back end there and Verstappen's going to slide through as well that's not what I wanted but I kind of lost the back end a bit under braking there so let's try and get past George Russell so in a fantastic race up in P9 for Williams admittedly they need to be patched and uh, brought down back to earth a little bit Williams they're a little bit too quick in this game at the minute although probably on day one that might not be a case anymore Verstappen is really on me he's got so much more pace I'm going to have to try and keep him behind as best as I can as a uh, Luckily, the back straight's coming up. That's going to save me as uh, we should get a nice toe and a slipstream off of Russell. And of course, some DRS through the banking. There we go. I'm not going to use DRS. I'm going to hope that the rich mix will do it by itself, will be enough. Let's see. DRS open. The staff is not catching. We're now starting again. And Russell is not really much. I'm going to use a little bit of overtake just to really close the gap. Down the inside of the Williams, the reigning F2 champion in real life. And there we go. We're past George Russell. Nice move. Here's Jeff. Up next, Danny Kafia. We'll get DRS here, but we're not going to be nowhere near close enough for an overtake. And then we've got Lewis or Butler. I'm not sure which one it is. Up the road, and then Vettel not too far ahead of them. So it's looking good. Although I think it's Lewis at the minute in the lead. That'd be my guess. And he is long gone out the front. He avoided most of the traffic, and I think he's got a nice gap now out front. Verstappen still hasn't got past George Russell yet, so that's good news for me. Let's try and get past Danny Kafia here if we can. Try and put the pressure on the Russian. Been held up an absolute treat by Kvyat this lap, as has Verstappen by Russell. But now we're going for the banking. A little bit of dirty air there, really pushing me out wide. We're going to try and tuck in a bit to avoid the dirty air. And there we go, onto the back straight. This will be a straightforward move. I'm not going to use any ERS. We should be okay to get this one done without ERS deployment. I'm going to actually put it in none to try and save a little bit. As we get the run on Danny Kvyat here, we're going to pull to the inside. Which will become... The apex for the hairpin, a little bit hot on the brakes there as we uh, rotate the rears, but job done as Verstappen gets past George Russell. So we now got a little bit of a buffer to Max Verstappen, so let's try and use that to create a bigger gap because I don't have the pace, so it'd be great for me to really pull away. We've got Butler in front, and he's actually gone for the hard tyre, so he's going to be on the mediums later on on a much quicker tyre, so let's see if we can make any progress towards him. There's still a bit of traffic we need to get through. A couple of cars going very long in this race, and... Uh, some of them really well placed, including a McLaren and a Force India, or in this case a Racing Point, who are quite high up the field. We're approaching the pit window. You'll be on the hearts. Ooh, Perez is out. Caution, caution. He's one of the uh, big boys in terms of he was probably the best placed midfield car. And on that strategy, he started the mediums and he was so far ahead. He was looking great for a really good result today because he would have done a one-stop and he was about... 15 seconds ahead of me and also the Red Bulls as well so that's one of the big midfield runners out of the race only signs and I believe Lance Stroll remain and uh, we are catching Butler here he's caught up in traffic and he's struggling to make progress but we're also nearing our pit window so I wonder if we can maybe undercut Devon Butler here by putting on the hards while he still tries to get through the traffic it could be interesting okay it's me right and pits in I think we're scheduled to pit in next lap if I'm not mistaken, we'll confirm it. Yeah, right in the pits in. And uh, we're not pitting yet apparently, so we'll go, although I'm thinking I might pit this lap to be honest. Because um, I think I want to try and undercut Devon Butler here. And if I want to undercut him, pitting earlier is going to be the way to go. Okay, Devon Butler has just passed Lance Stroll, who actually comes into the pit lane, so we're going to do the same thing. Red Bull starting to put pressure on behind me in the Red Bull as we run a bit deep into the pit entry there. But here we go. Let's try and do this undercut. Get it also down. And there we go. That's a good pit entry. Right. Looks like Signs or Norris. One of the two McLarens is in as well. Good start. Come on, boys. Exit. Exit now. Oh, man. I can't get that right. That pulling the gear away. For some reason, it won't do it. Lost a little bit of time there. Hopefully we just come out of some clean air. That's all I want. There's going to be Raikkonen who is going to go to the end of those tyres. Hopefully we can feed out in this little bit of clean air right now. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. There we go then. That's a good place to be. Nice bit of clean air to work with. Down to P13 now, but we're going to the end. We've done all our stops. Now it's time to get to work and really push on. And uh, see if we can try and get past Raikkonen and Stroll in front of us rapidly. Try and dispatch with them nice and quickly. And uh, really make that progress. No one picked that lap, which is good, so we'll get an extra lap to undercut. As a Raikkonen and Stroll get very close now, and they had a little look, a little bit of a battle towards the end of the long straight. 
hopefully by the end of this lap on the long straight I'm on the back of them and I can try and pass them both like we do with both of the red balls hopefully so uh, let's get to work okay, let's have a strong lap and try and get the back of these two okay then we're within range which is good we're set up beautifully all we've got to do now is have a nice smooth clean banking and then we'll try and get the run on the straight on the power there we go let's crank it up let's really get the run here I want to have a huge toe come on let's do this Free wide we're going to box in Kimmy we're going to have to back out of a, having a look at Stroll there into the hairpin because he was a little bit too far ahead we are going to get Kimmy though hopefully we can get Stroll out of this final corner and uh, onto the pit straight there we go got lap mode net engaged we're going to try and blast past Renault in the pit lane Daniel Ricardo. we're going to get past Stroll and there we go we pass both of them and back into the top 10 with Ricardo being in the pit lane Sebastian is in the pits yep Seb pits so last push here to try and get the undercut to work as uh, one of the Red Bulls comes in and that's do the house and probably the Renaults as well at the minute Lando Norris in front that's for position so we have to actually catch him to uh, gain another position in this race so uh, that's my moving target Lando Norris we need to go after him but here we go then let's see what happens in the pit lane we've got two cars three cars a Renault, a Red Bull and a Haas and we're going to breeze past with the personal best up to P7 now only Norris remains in terms of those on track of the midfield runners going to the end and then the other Haas has to come in so let's try and catch the Brit there we go, we've got Lucas Weber in the pit lane the car in front is seconds. this is going to be close, he's leaving the pit lane now I think he's uh, got it a little bit too far ahead I think yeah I can't get underneath there unfortunately so Lucas Webber has overcut me and done the job as we just tucked the back of him there. Very lucky to not get any wing damage. Let's try and stick with him. Maybe we can pass him on the back straight. I'm not sure how much pace we'll have, but we'll give it a go. I think Lucas is too quick. I just nabbed DRS, but he's already outside of a second, so um, not much we can do, I'm afraid. I'm just going to try and save you on the RS because I'm very marginal. Very, very marginal. Lucas Webber makes the move on Orlando Norris there for P6 and P5 respectively, so... The car behind is dropping back. We're seeing a gap form. Good progress, and that Haas is still staying out. And uh, we're catching him up as well, so... I reckon we'll get P5 this race, we'll get past Norris and the Haas. And that'll be it for us today. But that'll still be a good day's work. Okay, we're well now within Lando's DRS. Okay, you're catching the car ahead, but remember we need to get to the end of the race on these tyres. Just going to use it as a chance to save fuel on the RS behind him and uh, we'll make a nice easy move on him later on. I think I'll probably just wait to the back straight. In the meantime, I'm going to try and save as much as I can over the lap because we're going to need it also to get past the Haas, which seemingly is staying out here. I'm not sure if it's going to the end or not. Maybe it might come in for softs. Who knows? Here we go then. Let's try and set up Lando for the move. Got plenty of fuel to attack with. Rich Mix engaged. There we go. Let the car just stretch its legs on the banking and uh, this should be a simple move I don't think I'm going to have to use my ERS to, to get it done in the toe of the McLaren here come on we'll go to the left hand side this time take the racing line for the brake zone and yeah Magnussen's a P5 he's on the medium sorry on the hard so he's going to the end so we're going to have to get past K-Mag as well as we have a big big tank supper there out of the hairpin let's go after K-Mag now and try and secure P5 in this race Okay, then we're within range of K Mag here as uh, we're going to save a little bit of fuel on the RS just to really prepare this overtake. Now, K Mag has the same power unit as me, so it might be a bit more of a tricky move to pull off. So, we're going to give it full beans here. Try and get as much as we can. There we go, the full power is making a big difference. And we're going to power past the Haas. There we go for P5. I'm struggling from a pace though. I don't have much pace, not much more. Just about to be able to pull away and clear DRS, but that is it. There we have it then, Lewis wins in China, dominant win for him, very comfortable in the end and uh, even Seb couldn't really challenge, we're going to turn down the engine now, turn it right down as much as we can and uh, just cruise to the finish now, but it looks like Seb's going to get pick up P2 and uh, Devin Butler P3, I'm guessing Lewis got the extra point for the fastest lap, so uh, he's going to score a big fat 26 points for the championship and that's going to be a big response for Lewis because he should have won Australia, had not been for car trouble, so uh, the championship hangs in the balance between the two guys who combine nine world championships. But we're going to come through and we're going to finish in P5 here today for the Chinese Grand Prix. Good race. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part for me.
Grazie ragazzi, grande macchina. Grazie a tutti. So Mercedes have won it and what a great race it was. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Right, so looking at the final race results, Lewis Hamilton wins the Chinese Grand Prix and Devon Butler gets P2 in the end. So Sebastian Vettel, even though he was second all race, he actually missed out on second place and it's a 1-2 for Mercedes and um, only third place for Sebastian there. And his first race where he hasn't won this season, Lucas Weber P4 and uh, we come home P5 and that's our worst result of the season. We've got third in Australia, fourth in Bahrain and fifth today. So we're slowly downgrading our results. Kevin Magnussen P6, best of the midfield runners, Lando Norris P7. Nico Hulkenberg, Grosjean and Max Verstappen ran out the top 10. Verstappen, I'm guessing, might have had some car trouble this race, but he scores the final point. And then Stroll, Raikkonen, and Kvyat and Albon all miss out on the top 10. In terms of what the race means for the Drivers' Championship, let's have a look. And Sebastian Vettel leads by one point over Lewis Hamilton. Devon Butler overtakes me for P3, and we are currently fourth. So uh, we need to step up our game here and really try to catch up and uh, help out Sebastian a little bit. In terms of the Red Bulls, Lucas Weber beats or leads Max Verstappen by 11 points, but that's the top six. And then Sergio Perez, to be fair, only one point behind Verstappen, not too far behind. In terms of the constructors, we are second as Mercedes overtake us for top spot for the first time this season. The Silver Arrows are back on top and uh, we've got work to do as a team and we are going to put on some upgrades after this race straight away. So uh, speaking of that, let's jump into the laptop and let's upgrade the car. Your old opponent from F2 had a great race. What goes through your mind when you see him up on the podium? Devon is now ahead of you in the championship. Are you concerned? You had a pretty close finish with Lucas. What's it like racing a former teammate? You really cut your way through the field today. What was your strategy? Appreciate your time. Okay, so here we are then on the laptop and a uh, new feature, something I didn't know was in the game. We've actually got an interview transcript. So we're going to see what Lucas Weber, my former teammate, and of course, Devin Butler have been saying in the interviews. You know, I've done my bit, but uh, let's see what they've been saying. So in the first one, uh, we've got Lucas Butler here in the Red Bull, my former teammate, and uh, he got asked a couple of questions and he's generally quite happy to be um, at Red Bull. And you guys can pause it and read it for yourselves in detail, but he's quite happy to be at Red Bull and he's happy to be battling with me. But, you know, at the minute he's... Uh, He's also quite happy to beat me in China, which was uh, good to see. But he's also happy that I'm doing well in Ferrari. And then, um, of course, also just giving me a lot of credit and, uh, you know, not forgetting our past and uh, realizing that we practiced a lot in the past. And, uh, you know, we, we've always done well. And he's also quite happy with uh, the, t the start of the season he's, ha he's made so far. Obviously, he's ahead of a staff in the championship. So I think he, he's got a reason to feel happy. And then we've got Devon Butler here, of course, who uh, done his interview as well. And uh, this one was a bit more interesting because um, he, he gave me, I wouldn't say credit, but, you know, he, he gave me a little bit of respect saying that, we you know, we had a good bad to win F2 and he wants to keep on scrapping it out in F1. And, um, you know, if you look at the, the second paragraph, it was quite interesting because he started to throw some shade my way. And you can see that he says, look, Martinez might have been able to keep it pretty close during the old F2 days, but compared to the rest of the F1 competition, they just aren't used to keeping up with the same amount of pressure. Not all of us are born winners. So a big bit of a shade thrown there my way from uh, Devon Butler there. And then a few more questions there from to blow his smoke up his own rear end. And then... Um, yeah, overall, he's just, again, really full of himself, but uh, a little slide dig, and hopefully I can get back at him. Like I said before, you know, we've lost, we've lost the, the uh, third place in the championship to him, so 
the second that's happened, he's already opened his mouth and started talking. So um, we're going to try and overturn that deficit. Nonetheless, though, uh, that is it for that race. We've got a couple of... Um, classic events here and uh, one of them is going to be Vettel attending so we'll be doing that one probably in terms of R&D now we've got 1,900 points to spend so I think it's fair that we continue upgrading our car so first of all we're going to get the failed aerodynamic upgrade which we should have had for this race for the front wing for Baku and of course speaking of Baku of course it makes sense that we go for a bit of an engine upgrade um, it's, it's going to take two weeks to arrive though actually so realistically we're upgrading for the Spanish GP so I wonder if I can maybe I might go for some reliability options um, because they're all going to cost the, the same and reliability is a big part so if I quickly go check the engine where we've got 33 on the IC 21 on the MGUK 30% on the MGUH 20 30 okay so pretty much the same parts as last year um, what I am going to do is the control electronics because the control electronics is an important part you've only got two of them and actually the it's important to have the control electronics you know saved and kind of protected because if you actually protect the control electronics it actually means less wear for the rest of the car so we'll do one of them for Baku and along with that we'll do an RC upgrade because that's the most warm part so far so we'll get an RC upgrade on the car as well and we've got 483 points to spend and uh, looks like we're not be able to afford anything else for the next race. We could, actually no, we're just one point short of that engine upgrade. So we'll just save those points for now and uh, focus on some reliability work on the Ferrari. And hopefully that will help us out. We've got, we've got an upgrade coming anyway in the form of an aerodynamic upgrade. So uh, we'll see how we get on. But uh, yeah, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Career Mode. If you did enjoy it, then drop a like on the video. And also get subscribed for daily Formula 1 and MotoGP content. And turn notifications to not miss a video from me. And finally, check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you on my next episode very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.